<laughs> All right, we're recording, but Someone we haven't started yet. So the way this works is obviously I'm Adam Silver. This is Kyle Maurer. You are the audience. We would love to have participation and with like you know applause, whatever you want to say during the show. If it gets recorded, so be it. But we're not Please recording. laugh at our jokes. But we're not recording just yet. We're not saving this piece of it. This is all before I hit. I don't know if you I know. Need to right? explain. Just practice. Yeah. It's a practice. Yahoo. We okay. don't need to. Don't all right. Um, so I'm going to hit music bumper, and then we're going to start, and we'll be. You'll see the show. Okay. okay. We'll go from okay. there. It's so. self-explanatory. It's, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. Coming to you from WordCamp Dayton in the great state of Ohio, it's the Get Options Podcast with your hosts, Adam Silver and Kyle Maurer, and some other people too. This is the show where your WordPress questions are given some serious and not so serious options. And here they are. Why, hello, and welcome to episode 88 of the Function Get Options Podcast, the irreverent fun advice show about your life with WordPress. I'm Adam Silver with my buddy, my book co-patriot, my, my friend, uh, Kyle Maurer. Say hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. And hi, Adam. Hi. How are you today? Yeah. So for those hello, WordCamp Dayton. Woohoo! Woo! Woo! Yeah. Awesome. We are so excited to be here. We are. This uh, is the second time we've ever done a live show. Is it? Yep. That's yeah. a true fact. Right. What was the first? And the many time that we've ever been to Dayton. Uh, every week is live, technically. Yep. We're not also like true. phoning it in. But. Yeah. <laughs> Except the dead shows that we right. did. They weren't live. But, but this is the this second live show in front, in front of a live studio audience. Anyway, that's boring backstory. <laughs> but Dayton is a cool place, am I right? It is amazing. We have so many cool memories in this fun town. Do we? This is like a, a place of, of much WordPress and much... What are your favorite memories? <laughs> uh, I have one that you don't let's like. See. <laughs> Meeting you. Well, there's that. It's not on the list. Not on the list. No. All of the WordCamp talks that I've given here have been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Although, not a single one has ever made it online. (laughs) (laughs) No no guilt or anything. No pressure. Uh, Yeah. How many? Have you been to all five Dayton's? Actually, I missed one. It conflicted with Pressonomics one year, and I'm really sad about that. Nice. This is my third? I think it's my third. How many people have been to all five? One person, Daniel two people. And Daniel Dustin. and Dustin, of course. Well, makes sense. Very I've been cool. to three. I met you at my first one. Mm-hmm. And that's one of my fondest, fondest memories. It was not a very meaningful encounter, actually. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but okay. I was a, a subscriber of your podcast. Right. And you introduced yourself like, hey, I'm it's a like, super fan. Oh, hey, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you doing here all the way from California? <laughs> right. So. Day in Ohio. <laughs> so besides, uh, what else? Anything else new wise? Um, I have been learning a lot about Dayton recently. Oh, what do you what do you yeah, know? Yeah, I mean, I just, I wanted to learn more about this special town. That's pretty do tell interesting place. Nice. Did you know that there's a nice library here? I did. I <laughs> found that out, and it's uh, it was um, the place of the Battle of Dayton, which is the the most monumental battle in the history of American really? wars. Yeah, interesting. Actually, and. Uh, that it is named, fascinating. It was named after Julius Dayton, <laughs> who was an architect. Okay. Uh, he made uh, buildings, made okay. of bricks. Oh, wow. Uh, like all those ones that you see out there. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was his work. It was the birthplace of uh, Shirley Temple and Dolly Parton and <laughs> Fran Tarkenton. Wow. And Albus Dumbledore and Bruce Lee. <laughs> uh, a lot of people forget about some of these people, but um, Dayton is a special place with a lot of amazing history. That is, uh, Ask me about it later if you want to know more. I got. Yeah, I did I mean, not know any of that. Really, Bruce Lee. I, yeah. Wow. That's, I didn't uh, know that either. I didn't know that either. That is shocking. You know. That is. That is. I mean, how many people here knew that? Yeah. No, nobody else knew that either. See, see, you guys don't even know your own town's history. Wow. Anyway, what else is going on with you, buddy? Um. Well, I mean, I'm here. This is. Uh, I mean, on a side note, this is this day is the fifth anniversary of my other podcast, Kitchen Sink WP. No kidding. No kidding. And I want to give credit where credit is due to myself. Yes. <laughs> every, uh, I mean, every week I've done the show for five years. No, actually, I want to give credit to, um, to Dustin, actually. Dustin is the one who pressured me into launching my own podcast uh, five, actually, like five and a half years ago. Mm. Seven years ago. <laughs> seven years ago. I mean, I can edit that out. That's so funny. Because so. Dustin was important to the foundation of our first show as well. Like, we had started the Roundtable show, which I talked about this morning. Right. Which was five years ago in a few weeks. And Dustin was uh, the second guest we ever had on our show. He was my first. And we had only done, like, four or five episodes. Right. Um, yeah. So... When so, you make contact with Dustin, you make, uh, you make you know strides in life. 
You make yeah. it rain. <laughs> Your life <laughs> or won't or be the snow same. tomorrow. So okay, yeah, that's but that's all I really got. The five years, two hundred and sixty two episodes of my other show. This is episode eighty eight. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Nice. So all right. Did you um wanna ask anything else regarding on that little note there? Or not so much. Wanna we'll just move on? Let's move on. <laughs> okay. Uh I need to push a button. <laughs> This is Point at which we do talk about everything that's new. All right. All right. That's the news. The you news. Got- what is in the news, Adam? So Amy, Tracy, and Angela. That's Amy Masson, Tracy Apps, and Angela Bowman. Correct. Uh, look at that. I didn't, I didn't even have the last names written down. Yeah. They started a new podcast because they know Dustin. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they started uh, Women in WP. So... Um, Pretty cool. Have you listened to it? I did. They've released one episode now. It's on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, the whole works. They've got a video recording on womeninwp.com where you can check it out. Uh, but they're talking about just uh, the issues and that women care about and everything that uh, women are doing that's interesting in the WordPress space. So Women in WP, check it out. Yeah, very cool. So, all right. Just released this week. Yeah, that's right. Moving on. <laughs> We've got one change this week. Sandhills Development, one of the greatest companies in the industry. Why do you say that, Kyle? Why is it such a great company? What do you know about this company? I just, I mean, are I, they know, from I know a lot about Are they great because no, they're from Dayton? No, actually. Oh, actually, where are they no from? No presence in Dayton, in oh. Dayton surprisingly, but um, they're just a great company. You know, they do great things, make great, pro- great, great products, employ great people. Full disclosure, Kyle works for them. Oh, mm, yeah. That's, that's true, too. But um, we hired Spencer Fennell, okay. and he's an amazing developer, formerly of Astoundify. Made some great themes, made some great plugins, has been in the space for a long time. So there's some changes. Okay, right on. Anyone else have a new job in this last week that we don't know about? <laughs> anyone out there? Anyone? Anyone lose a job? Not I yet. hope not. We'll check back in at the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're hiring, let us know. We'll share it on the show. All right. All right. What you're wearing, what you're bringing, what you're drinking now. What you're wearing, what you're bringing, what you're drinking now. Oh, yeah. So you start this because I need to get something out of the bag. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I am wearing my jilt socks, actually. How about you? Oh, also, I have jilt socks. Yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. Check out Jilt. Jilt. A yeah. great email yeah. recovery and email right. marketing service. And Check they out are jilt.com. Not a sponsor, but they're great. They're awesome. We love them. We use them. Yeah. Uh, and they make great socks. And socks are the thing. I'm also work- wearing a fleece from WordCamp Ann Arbor, a whatever year. I don't know, 2015, probably. I am also wearing. Whoa! Hey, what's this? Oh wow! <laughs> a Get Options T-shirt. Whoa. Wow! Impressive. And I've got one for you, buddy. Oh, look at that! That's surprise! Surprise! surprise. Yeah. Next year I'll have one of our faces on it. So. Check it out! Isn't that cool? We That's have T-shirts cool. now. We have T-shirts. Very cool. I'm reading <laughs> book five of uh, Harry Potter, uh, The Order of the Phoenix. And the reason that's slightly funny for those who don't know. It's, we don't need the backstory. No, we, we don't, do. It's not it that It takes funny. Kyle a very long time to read very basic books. That's an exaggeration. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm going to just... You've never read it, so you don't even know. Okay? I've seen the movies. <laughs> just saying. No one asked. <laughs> but we I'm actually... also drinking a chai latte oh, from Table 33. It's You're... delicious. Oh. Now, okay. how about yourself? So what am I? So I'm wearing a... Um, Code is poetry shirt, because code is poetry. It's, uh, it's WordPress. I am drinking water, which is on the floor. But I'm also drinking, it's a library. A lot of times when we record this show, you know, on the weekend, we drink coffee. Sometimes we drink beer, because it's late afternoon. It's rare, but I wish we could do that more often. But um, because it's library, I went ahead and I was told not to bring beer to the library. So I brought something extra for myself. So excuse me one second. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Mm. Ooh, that's a little burn. Iced tea. <laughs> yeah, it's iced tea. It's yes. iced tea. Okay. Yeah. So it's in a flask that my 18-year-old daughter gave me. Yeah. What? Someone gave it to her when she was 14. <sighs> There's a conversation to be had there. Yeah, it's, I think so. I think so. It's awkward. And um, I am reading uh, an audiobook actually called Driven to Distraction. Okay. It's about um, uh, ADD and ADHD. So I'm reading a book called Driven to Distraction. So, nobody, no, no, it didn't work. It's all right. <laughs> Squirrel! 
Okay. So it's actually really good. It's a cool book. Yeah. So that's what I'm reading right Unlike now. Unlike that joke. <laughs> oh, wow. But before we continue, there's, I, mean, you know, I want to ask you something. Okay, what? Regarding what you're reading, we actually got some uh, listener feedback. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, and I just want to share this real quick. Listener feedback. We did. Regarding your last week's uh, comments on um, reading things. So I just need to make this a little bigger so I can see this. What? So this was sent in by Scott Deluzio. He said, I just listened to the last Get Options episode where you mentioned Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. I had my son listen to it on the way to school today. And it totally made his day that we mentioned him. Oh, right. Because two weeks ago, you were mentioning book four. Right, right, right. Adam is, the, his name is Adam as well. He's like nine years old. And he's already ahead in the series than Kyle is. So it made us day that he heard his name on our show, which then leads me to the next comment. Then Scott's daughter, who is six years old, chimes in from the back seat and says, maybe Kyle should read Little House on the Prairie, like me. It's probably easy enough for him to read. Okay. So there you go. I see how it is. <laughs> you enjoy this so much. <laughs> I've been waiting all day to get that one out. Right. All day. So yeah. if you're looking, when you're done with the series, yeah. there's Little House Thank on the you. Prairie. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know the daughter's name, so thank you to Adam's right. little All sister. Right. Let's move on. Let's, okay. move, let's move on. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Kyle, guess what time it is? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Can you tell me? Uh, I can. Yeah. <laughs> it's questions time. Coming what? to you from Cary, North Carolina. Wait, wait. Just kidding. It's questions time. There we go. That's right. It's questions time. You sent them in. We read them. We researched them. And now it's time. <laughs> Give you some options. That was really awkward. Are you ready, Kyle? Are you guys ready? Woohoo! Questions! Woo! All right. All so right. this episode is slightly different since we're in a live audience. We're going to have guests come up. We've preset two guests to ask, answer a question, give options to a question, as well as play a segment. We have some games on the show as well. So the first person to come up will be Alex. Alex, come to the stage, please. Come, stage. come on. Come on. Get on down here. Help us out. We need your professional help. We do. I'm going to... Oh, so actually, because Kyle... Because we're not so good at the Kyle's podcast. Kyle's asking this thing. one. Alex and I are going to give some options. Not all the options are good. Just know that now. Okay. This question comes to us from an anonymous listener, actually. I'm curious what they're thinking, but the question is, is it selfish to be self-employed? Ooh. What do you think about this, man? Well, option, option one is that it's... Uh, it's not nearly as selfish being self-unemployed. You know, like, <laughs> quit wow. your job, decide I'm never going to be employed, I'm never going to work, I'm never going to do anything because <laughs> I just want to work on myself for the rest of my time, and uh, that's that's more selfish, I think. So self-employed is a little better than self-unemployed. A little better. Okay, you're right. I have an option. Uh, the answer is yes. It is. It is completely yeah. completely selfish. Mm. I know this because I've been told this many a time by people in my house. <laughs> in your house. <laughs> Why do you work every day, all day, all the time? Why are you so selfish? <laughs> Why are you so selfish? I mean, it's just, I mean, I don't know. I think they're talking to me, but they are teenagers, so I don't oh, know how to take it. teenagers. I don't know. I don't think I agree. I don't think okay. it's, I don't think it's selfish. I think, especially in the context of WP freelancing, it's a life of service and servitude and suffering, <laughs> helping others achieve their dreams as you scrape by making no money. Uh, yeah, nothing could be. Less selfish. <laughs> really? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah. This entire show is Being fascinating a, to me. A this, WordPress freelancer. The weirdest thing from my perspective is the fact that we're in person versus on Skype. Mm-hmm. So this is freaking me out. I know. So, well, get over it. I did, you look, you're much taller in person than you do look on video. <laughs> you guys have any other options, you have another option, Alex? for this listener? Uh, I also thought it was worth mentioning that I felt a little attacked by the question. Mostly because... It's not so much that I'm selfish for being self-employed. It's selfish because I have a Cayman Islands holding company that takes all the money, and so I don't really need anything, and that handles it all for me. And that's maybe a little more selfish. So oh. Let's talk about that instead. <laughs> let's. So who do you use for that kind of account? Oh, I, I, I roll my own. I, oh. Uh, yeah. And do you accept Bitcoin from yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I mean... It's an interesting question, and I consider this question a lot and deeply, but I didn't write my answer down. So, no, I mean, it's interesting because I am self-employed, as you are, mm. and you're not. Yeah, I'm recovering self-employed. Uh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just feel like it's tough. I mean, I have a high school senior going to college, and the fact that I can't afford any of that for her at the moment sucks for her. 
But other than that, <laughs> I'm okay with my life. So I have two other boys, and I'm saving for them. So, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> another option is not to be self-employed. That's a great option. Why do you I say that? I love that option. But, but don't you miss your clients? No, not for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Not one moment of my life is wasted uh, reminiscing about the days of serving clients. Huh. But, but now you have customers. You serve them. I do, yeah. Are they not clients? In this, just in a different... In a sense. Clients and customers. The it's only just, difference is a few letters. It's a different ballgame, man. It's a totally different ballgame. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, it's probably, it's probably worth mentioning that like, even the idea of being employed is a relatively new one, right? Like, if you go back to a few hundred years ago, the employment percentage was zero because just, like, we didn't have jobs yet. There were no <laughs> batteries to go get a job at. Everyone had to kind of make their own way. And it's, uh, like, so it's pretty easy to, like, say, oh, Alex likes to sit on the couch, and then he doesn't want to code until midnight. Oh, man, that's pretty selfish of him. And, yeah, that's probably true. But also, like, Wait, wait, wait. It's... You don't like to code till midnight? Oh, oh I don't know. The reason this is a problem <laughs> is because Alex works for me oh, a little bit. This explains a lot. Okay. I think I'm going to find out that about becoming new lease more self-employed through the changes segment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kitchen sink. I mean, Concierge WP is hiring a new developer. Yes. <laughs> All right. Funny. All right. Not so funny. anything else on that you want to add? I think that there are elements of this which resonate with me. Okay. Honestly. By all means. Yeah. Like, I, I, I do recollect... I was self-employed for five or six years. Right. And it was after a couple of years that things started to get difficult. And I started to get this inkling of an idea that maybe this really wasn't the right course for me. But there were reasons I told myself, no, I, I've got to stick it out. And I think those were the wrong reasons. I think there was some selfishness and some pride in my stubbornness. Uh, over not considering other options. I had this idea that, like, the idea of having a boss. Like, I don't have a boss, and I don't want to have a boss. And I was very prideful over that. And the thought of, like, leaving self-employment to work for someone else just didn't appeal to me. But I had to eventually get over that, and it took a few years. Right. I mean, we talked about this before because we mm -hmm. knew the question a little bit a couple days ago. And I will honestly tell you that I used to be very selfish um, seven, eight, nine years ago. Because I've had a few iterations of my own companies for the past 20. But about seven, actually about seven years ago, it wasn't a good place. I was stubborn and I wanted to hold on to that thing for way too long. Mm -hmm. Which honestly almost cost a marriage, to be truthfully and honest. And she doesn't listen to the show. So, um, yeah, you know, it's a problem. And I've... I've more aware of it now. I'm cognizant of it. I mm. joke about the whole college thing, but I'm also realistic. So I'm not, it's not below me by any stretch to accept opportunities when they present themselves in any which way. Mm -hmm. you know, if that means I shut down again for a short time, I do. It's not forever. It's for now. So. It's important to do things for the right reasons, right. I think, at the end of the day. Right. Yeah, it's like, I think that's what really determines whether or not you need to see it as selfish to be self-employed. If you're mm. being self-employed because you demand to have some... Uh, extra amount of flexibility that you only have to work two hours a day or something like that. Yeah, that's absolutely selfish. But mm. if you're self-employed because you feel like that's the best way that you can serve the people that you need to serve and the best way that you can, you know, make the impact that you want to make the impact on, mm -hmm. which I think there's a lot of people out there, I count myself in that, that like, if that's the best way, that's the best way. And it would be, it would be selfish to lose that opportunity mm. if you're in the right state. I hear you. Right. Okay. Good input. All right. All right. So we also have a segment to play now. You guys want to play a game? Want to play a game? Let's play a game. Okay. Okay. So uh, this case, this game is called Unordered List. Oh, sorry. Dang. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dustin's favorite. Unordered <laughs> List. If I kill ink, I don't know. <laughs> you jerk. Flux capacitor. Oh, my gosh. What's your name? <laughs> It's like my first ever podcast all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a bumper. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. This is a little game we play where a contestant gets 30 seconds to list as many items in a category that they're presented with on the spot as they can. We keep score. We see who wins. It's all fun and games. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start by asking – no, Kyle's going to ask Alex. Alex is going to ask me. I'm going to ask Kyle. All okay, right. So Alex, are you ready to play Unordered Lists? We have music to go with this. I'm not ready at all, but here I am. <laughs> okay. Okay. Alex, in 30 seconds, name as many 
JavaScript libraries and frameworks as you can go. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Gatsby used to talk to Gatsby. Nice. Are those two? Yeah, that's two. <laughs> okay. Ten seconds. How many is that? That's eight, I think. Wow. Good For job. Nice. Eight. That's a pretty good number. Good job, Alex. Nice, Alex. All right, who's next? Alex, you're going to hit me, Adam. Oh, shoot. But see, I always start the timer way late. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, for this Dayton edition of Unordered oh, List. I'm so nervous. Uh, did you know that there are other U.S. states that have a city named Dayton in them? Uh, name as many of those as you can. Whoa. California, Colorado, Illinois, uh, Texas. Am I hitting? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... Uh, Nebraska, uh, Mississippi, I'm trying to think of one of the states, New Mexico, uh, Nevada, Colorado, um, Maine, uh, Michigan, <laughs> I'm not going to win this one, Nevada, I think I said that one, okay, okay I said that one, Tennessee, oh, yes. uh, oh squeeze it in four, four, okay, all right, all right, do you need the correct answer? No, we don't need them, oh, okay. we believe you, that was four, that was, uh, there's 12, including Ohio. You didn't even mention Ohio. I didn't Ohio. mention Ohio. <laughs> what a Such sucker. A loser. All right. Okay, Mauer. All right. Adam. You ready for this one? Give, it, give me an easy one. This, this is an easy one for you. Okay, thank you. It's like a Harry Potter one. I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right, here we go. So Mr. Mauer, in 30 seconds or less, name uh, as many Michigan sports teams. Ready? Go. The Spartans, the Wolverines go blue. The Lions, the Tigers, the Red Wings, the Lug Nuts. Let's see. The, uh, the, what are the, the Central? The Chips? Chippewas. Uh, the, let's see. What else do we have? I'm so happy. I'm, I'm, I lost, but I'm happy. Yeah. You lost, forgot one minute. Pistons! Oh, you why? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> why? Eight. We got, ooh, there's a tie. Ooh, a tie. Oh, shoot. We, we never had a tie before, and we're going to end it with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, that is it for you. So thanks Thank you. Alex. Let's give it a hand for Alex. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. We're going to keep things moving along, and I want you guys, you listeners out there, to uh, keep in your mind that we're going to have a little bit of time for audience Q&A. At the end. Soon. Right. So think of some good head-scratching questions to just stump us. But up, coming up next, we have another special guest. We do. We want to welcome to the stage Dustin Hartzler. Woo! Woo! All right. This time I'm going to read a question that uh, Kyle and, uh, if you want to hold it, yeah, uh, Dustin will answer. Here's the question. If... Is anyone doing reoccurring payments, subscriptions, memberships, like maintenance packages, using WooCommerce with Stripe? What WooCommerce extensions are you using for the reoccurring functionality? That's asked by Alistair McDermott. Uh, uh, he's out in the, uh, I think he's in Ireland. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. so no, so no one is doing this. Literally no one is doing this. <laughs> no one's using WooCommerce. That's the answer. What's next? Oh, uh, deletable? Okay. Yeah. Um. That was going to be my answer. Oh, yeah. shoot. But my next answer is, uh, what's Stripe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like... I don't know. What is it? Like PayPal, the better. Isn't it owned by PayPal? No. I know. I'm teasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just so you know, Venmo is owned by PayPal. Uh, yeah. So, so how do you, what are some options for, I guess, for people doing reoccurring functionality with mem- uh, recurring payments? Mm. What would you recommend, Mr. Uh, Hartzler? Um, yeah, I would recommend that they do some sort of like reoccurring like subscription membership. <laughs> so literally, with the question asked. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> what extensions for WooCommerce? Oh, extensions. What extensions okay, okay, would you okay, use okay. for WooCommerce? All right, I'll get serious now. Um, <laughs> oh, now. <laughs> Starting now. Starting now. Five years later. 
Um, so yeah, so I'm a happiness engineer on WooCommerce, and we have this question. We haven't had this exact question, so that's why it threw me a little bit. I've never had somebody want to do maintenance packages with a reoccurring subscription. But the purpose of WooCommerce and the purpose of um, using some sort of online platform with Stripe w and reoccurring, the cool part about that is like they can set it up and then they automatically get paid all the time whenever they set up that. That all the time. All the time. <laughs> you can pay it all the time. <laughs> every hour you can get paid with WooCommerce. Is that ethical? <laughs> it's great. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I think I, if you have to ask the I'm, question. I'm not self-employed, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well played. Um, but anyways, with WooCommerce, um, the basic functionality is there. Stripe is kind of built in. There's a plugin that you can use that can be installed while you're installing WooCommerce. And then you would need the subscription plugin and the membership plugin. Those would get the basic functionality pieces. Another piece that I thought about as I was kind of um, contemplating this question is there's, we have a plugin called uh, Product Add-ons. And so that would give ability if people wanted to like actually specify things as part of the um, the checkout process. So maybe they say like, oh, I want to I want to get this many backups per month, or I want to save this. You know, maybe it's a um, they're selecting a membership package, but maybe they want you know ten the most ten recent backups stored to the cloud, and then they're deleted. Or maybe you want to send their username and password through cl clear text, and then they get hacked. Whatever. Like you can do that with a product called Product Add-on. And <laughs> wait, <laughs> what? Did I, you slip can ha that, did I slip that in or not? Yeah. <laughs> so, Kyle, are you a big fan? Aren't you a huge fan also of Woo Commerce? Oh, so much. The mascot is really charming. <laughs> what uh, is? Is there a mascot still? Canvas theme. Uh, <laughs> old, old, deprecated. Old. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what would you go with? Special. What would well, you say, Mister Non Woo Commerce, Mister EDD? I would say, you want to go? You want to dance? <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk, shall we? Um, the subscriptions add-on for WooCommerce is the way to go, made by ProsPress. That's uh, a great team and a extremely popular plugin, so people are doing this stuff left and right. But uh, my, my added commentary is the fact that I've been doing a little research on our market and um, surveying our users and... Um, I represent an e-commerce plugin that isn't WooCommerce, actually. But we have uh, surveyed our audience extensively, and one of my interesting findings has been that the uh, market of people selling services online is growing rapidly, uh, at least in our user base. I don't know if it's, if it's the case with WooCommerce or other platforms, but in our user base, in a two-year span, people selling services with our plugin went from less than 2% of our audience to greater than 10%. Uh, so it was like a, an obscure edge case that we didn't pay attention to. So you're saying that people have already, they're already using easy digital downloads to sell digital things. Correct. But you never, it, it went from 2% to 10% of like subscription reoccurring services. Right. Yeah. Okay. People selling not a product, but a service okay. instead. It was a small part of our user base. Now it's getting, becoming a big part of our user base and we can't ignore it anymore. Sure. Any idea why? <sighs> have you asked? All these people are now self-employed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reoccurring right. revenue. Fair enough. It was a softball, people. It was a softball. I don't know. Uh, selling services is interesting, and I think we've introduced more plugins that have made that possible. So it's, be it's become more viable than it ever was before due to some of the complex extensions which now exist. And, uh, and there's a lot of uh, businesses which have pioneered it and um, led by example. Uh, moving towards a, like a subscription online model for selling their their maintenance packages. That's not that's not particularly uncommon anymore. But I think like in the past, you know, say five years ago, eight years ago, whatever, you could set up on Stripe or Authorize.net. You could set up the reoccurring payments, but that's like a side piece of your business because it wasn't built into WordPress. Right. So now we're you know. If you're in the WordPress space, you're giving WordPress consulting, you're, you're doing word um, maintenance. Uh, maintenance plans and whatnot. I mean, like, I, I have that. already in WordPress. Like, let's use the tool for, yeah. you know. But doesn't it add, I mean, what's the, the theory here, though? I mean, I already have this. I have maintenance packages. I use Stripe or FreshBooks with Stripe. So I guess, I, I guess it, it would take that e piece of the equation out. I wouldn't have to tie into that. Well, it would automate everything so that well, you're not sending, manually sending any invoices. You know, like someone comes to your your store your site right. and clicks a buy button and okay. signs up and right, they minute. have everything right. that they need and automatically continue paying. Okay. What are you looking at? Just reading. <laughs> it's, uh, this is uh, all oh. questions that we have answered in our first year of doing the podcast oh. in like little fine print. Total. Oh, old, now he's yeah. reading the, the ADD so book that I'm reading. Be, uh, 
<laughs> yeah. So, Selling right. services is it's an interesting new um, segment. It is. I think. And, it, and I, put to, I kind of argue that it is a little bit underserved and growing. So if you're looking for like, you know, this is, this is an audience which is like kind of using tools not made for them for their purposes anyways. There are people selling their services of a variety of kinds, their consultations, um, their design work, Mm -hmm. uh, their ongoing retainer work, um, just selling a service, using tools designed to sell products. So they're bending tools not made for them to make them fit. And this this is a market that isn't particularly well served right now. I but, think. but I will I will give people who are out there who who currently in the audience sells maintenance has maintenance back recurring. So we have a half a dozen, maybe maybe ten. Um, do you? Uh, the question for the audience is: Do you <laughs> let people automatically sign up and start payment from a website? You know, for, for, no, you don't. You why not? Well, the question would be, would be: How do you have that process worked out? Oh, okay. Right. Or he just waves them by. He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the reason I ask this question is because back in the day when I started concierge um, for with maintenance, I let people sign up, make the payment, and get things going right from the get-go. Yeah. The problem with that is I'm now liable. I have their money. They've signed up. Their site already might be hacked, might have malware. They might be on really bad hosting. And now they're expecting me to clean it for 100 bucks, right, which could take me hours in theory. So now I've changed my set up to where they apply for us to do maintenance for them. I can review their application, if you will, and then I can say yes or no. So that way I don't have your money. If you're on really bad hosting, $3 a month or buck ninety-five, whatever it may be, I can then turn it down. And it definitely, I've definitely lost business this way, but I've also not had any headaches this way. Well, that's why s- selling services is complicated. It is. And that's why it's been a, 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 a market slow to right. come into online automated selling it's, like it's this. It's easier when we build the sites. You, I mean, after, it's, it's a post-production. I'm sorry. <laughs> we build like, sites, and then they turn into the By sites. its nature, like you're, you're selling services. These, these are things that are like maybe custom mm. produced after the transaction. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are deliverables that come later on. Payments might be coming in stages. That makes the transaction a little more complicated. Um, there may be necessary like project management features or like some automated system for demonstrating the status. Um, there, there might be agreements and contracts necessary in that initial right. transaction, which plugins do exist that are helping solve this problem. So that you can like introduce a, like a signature step in the process of your of your checkout workflow or. Um, and like meetings and consultations, so like you need to book an appointment as a part of this purchase, and that n- opens up the whole calendar issue. When are you available? Right, and, and so on, and then maybe files that need to be exchanged initially, and then later for the project to be possible. So like selling services is fundamentally just more complicated than a transaction file is, or con- uh, product is delivered. Right. Um, well, ob- yeah, it makes sense. Okay, it is tricky, but it's a. I think it's a growing market, and it I think is. people should look at it. Right. Because at WooCommerce and not EDD. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Let's edit that out in post. We'll, we'll edit that out. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can be bribed. <laughs> All right. So now moving on to uh, the segment for this one. Let's play another game, shall we? We should. It's time for Deletable History. This needs to be deleted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, it all can't be gems. All right. Yeah. So you want to explain this one? Dustin. What, me? <laughs> no, no, no. Do you want to explain how, what, the, how, oh, what how it play, is? How, how to play. Goes. It's not really a game maybe so much it as it's maybe just... Maybe I can describe it. Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Dustin. I'll describe it. I've been a guest on this show several times, and I've hijacked both of their seats before. So um, I kind of know how this thing works. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tell us. So deletable history. This is the segment of something on, of ours that is online somewhere <laughs> that we wish was deleted. It <laughs> never made the light of day and never made it online. Uh, we cringe, it's a, the we dirty cringe a little bit when we look past. back at this. Yeah, but, uh, it's the dirty laundry of our, of our creative endeavors. <laughs> it's not good. If you call them creative. Right. So who's uh, first? I think, I think Dustin is first. Oh, please, I hope so. Let's pick apart an early <laughs> website project. <laughs> Shall we? That Dustin created. Oh, yes. Woo! Look wow, at that. That is nice. One of Dustin's first websites. One of my first resume websites. It may be hard to see. Um, it's so beautiful, I though. I'm wearing a tie. It's the first... <laughs> Thing that I see, mm. but this was a this was a website done back in, let's see, it would have been 2007, um, probably created with 
Mm, I'm not going to say front page, but Dreamweaver. 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 Yeah, sure. right. Yeah, because the buttons are images. Yeah, yeah Like absolutely. the menu up that, there. That Rollovers. About me, uh, portfolio, resume, all that kind of stuff. Those were images, multi image. So you rolled over them and they changed color. Or there was a little something beside them. Beautiful. I have my contact information on the web. Mail me at <laughs> 2249. <laughs> And my email address from university, my phone number, um, my old cell number. Social, is there social security on there? My social security is <laughs> yeah. on there. Mother's maiden name. Uh, just yeah. And it's got, my, it's got my resume down the left-hand side here. We see I was in the Office of Residence Life. I was an apartment manager. I was very proud of that. I was the student, sec- or student senate. Technology. You were a webmaster? I was a webmaster. Back when that was an applicable title. Absolutely. That's gone out of fashion. It's, out it's of fashion. coming back. It's, it's coming back. back. Oh, yeah. For and, real. And oh. the best part is I have that, t- that line at the top. Thank you for visiting my site. <laughs> Thank you for visiting. <laughs> Thank, you for visiting. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you all for visiting this the uh, session. The is uh, the under construction, like, little <laughs> the, the man. Did it have a hit counter on the bottom? <laughs> it might have. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> we will good. So now you've seen it. Delete it from your history. Delete it. Mm. Delete it from your minds. No. You, do not saw, you do not ever saw this. What do who's, we have next? Who's next? This. Oh, no. Is it me? Oh, no. It's a production. So, so you want to go to the very beginning, or should I explain it? Oh, whoops. How do you make it play? Hey, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is a commercial spot. I used to be in video production. Used to be is obvious now. And um, it's a 30-second spot. I is produce. this a familiar site? Need reliable transportation? Are you searching for a solution? I wish we had a dependable car. Your wishes come true at Sprinkler. <laughs> Great selection and unbeatable prices. We're Boulder County's oldest used car lot. We're family owned and family friendly. Our wish came true at Sprinkler Used Cars. Thanks, Sprinkler. Sprinkler Used Cars. 1011 South Main Street. Long month. Say, I'll blast me <laughs> Oh, man. That's painful. That's great. But that was on That's TV. Great. I was paid a lot of money for that. <laughs> and, yeah, that was... Uh, that was me. My voice, my old assistant. Yeah. So what's who, wrong with it? Oh, nothing's wrong with it. Um, so many things were wrong with this. <laughs> so many things. Yeah, we did a couple of variations of it, and that, they actually loved this commercial, the, the client. I could never watch. This is the first time I've, well, now I've seen it last night and then today. Mm. In the, I shot that. And we, we so like that. you were editing it in post and putting in the smoke oh, out yeah. of the car and the, yeah. little, and the genie that was, that was after, after Adobe After Effects. Wow. We shot it. That was her car on the side yeah. of the road. You've it's my old talent. Assistant. More than I, I give you credit for. That was my old assistant. Yeah. True, true story. My old assistant's name was um, uh, Montana Hanky. <laughs> her name was Montana Hanky. So her middle name was Hannah. So her Montana, Hannah Hanky. It's crazy. So my kids loved her. She was a great assistant, um, <laughs> but couldn't act her way out of a, you know, out of a jar. No, it's okay. <laughs> Wow. But yeah, they they the client liked it. We pitched it. We did the storyboards, um, made some money, and there it is. It's Forever. amazing. It's, it's amazing. amazing. Don't I'm, delete it's, it. It's painful to see that and to hear that. So you should put the, like, if Dustin builds you a resume site, you should put this <laughs> on it. <laughs> oh yeah, that would okay. be on the first page. Obviously. First page. Yeah, yeah. All right. What do you got, Mauer? All right. Oh, it's so bad to see that. It's great. It's great. Okay, so I found an old blog post. Oh yeah, of mine from 2012. Yeah, so it's a little old. I used to blog back back then. He was, like he was eight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Open the link. You were nine. Okay, so this is on, on my blog. And so my you one. can uh, read the long thing, but the gist is I thought I was so witty and snarky, and I had some attitude about, like, people on social media are always posting these, like, stupid pictures about the things that they support. And they're just all these uninformed people sharing their opinions in this confrontational manner. And so I was like, I'm going to make fun of them. And I'm going to make my own little uh, little memes, if you will, or little <laughs> pictures to share on social media. And I'm going to like share a whole bunch of these. See, this and isn't really deletable. I, I, I think you should put these out. <laughs> yeah. This will be on my, on my, new ED, no, my new WooCommerce store for T-shirts. Yeah, I thought I was so witty. I'm totally and making shirts out of this. We're selling these. Yeah, <laughs> digital downloads, yeah. <laughs> product catalog. Yeah. yeah, this person supports Luke Skywalker. Yeah, <laughs> hit share. Oh, if so you the na- t- clearly the nap one is me. Yes. I, 
I'm a huge who, who likes naps. I love naps. Why did I make so many of these? How many? <laughs> how many are there? I don't know. I don't remember. Actually, I didn't scroll all the way down. <laughs> so real quick. So this is 2012. So how old were you? Like, did you not have a job? I don't. I don't. I probably did. I, this was probably at my job. I had a lot of downtime. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, dang, there's a lot. <laughs> oh, my all about you. Yeah. <laughs> They're obviously all about you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fine, there's, yeah. An end to the, there's an end to the madness. All right. right, okay. All right. Oh, man. Those colors are nice. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Is that from Adobe Cooler color wheel? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Right. Anything else? No. So I think that's it for, the, for you, Dustin. What? <laughs> oh, now, no. Oh. Uh, Dustin, can, I mean, if you, if you want to stick around and help us answer our audience Q&A. Is that us? Um, We've got we've got a little bit of time before uh, we're going to welcome Steve back up for his second talk of the day, and you guys should uh, look forward to that. Real it's quick, where is stunning. that photo from? I don't know. Is that... It was one of the word camps. It was probably in Ohio. Oh, okay, that might be deletable. Because... I mean, your haircut is deletable. Uh, <laughs> oh. Rude, oh. rude. All but right, true, so we have some true. time. I wanted to see, uh, ask a question from the audience. I think Guy had one. Uh, I'm putting him on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> Anyone have a question for us that we can give you an option for? While we're thinking, mm. anyone have a question for us? Yeah, like a real head scratcher, a stumper. <laughs> anyone? Anyone at all? What's puzzling you these days? Ms. Bishop. What have you been reading about that's confusing you? Oh, I saw you there. <gasps> yes, in the back. In the back. That probably, yeah. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That's, the question is, creating a plug in, I mean, a block for Gutenberg. Correct, yeah. How should it be distributed? Right, if it's only a single block, is it worth it just packaging that as an entire plug-in and distributing it that way? I would say that depends on the nature of the block. No. But probably, yeah. No, so I would go a different way altogether. I would actually put that on a um, uh, probably like a little thumb drive and mail those out. Oh, well, you could do that. You could, you could do that too. Yeah, that's an option. Compact so, discs, you know, maybe. That way you don't, you, you don't need to <laughs> fill up the repository with your code. Just right. mail it to people. And, and my thought is, is it really worth it? Like, <laughs> should we really just release one block? Like, all of these have at least ten, so hmm. keep developing. Come back, to, come back when you have nine, nine more. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, keep trying. <laughs> but, I, I, but thank you for the question. No, I would probably release it as a plugin. Yeah, why not? I mean, you, you can think a little bit about what the future could be. Like, what if this becomes popular? And what if I really decide I want to invest more in it and I really enjoy it and I get tons of tickets and people are asking, can you add this feature and that feature? I think about what it could turn into and, and be mindful of that when you give it a name and um, and just just imagine, like, what if someday there was, like, a pro version needed? Like, how would that sound? Ooh. I don't know. Think about all I, that well, stuff. Well, if it's a pro version, you might need a zip drive. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> CD-ROMs all the way. <laughs> I probably would. There's no reason. I mean, be, there are plugins on the directory that, um, after the plugin header, have no more than a single line of code, and they are useful. People download them because they solve a problem. Like Betterify. Betterify has a lot more lines of code okay. than that. Betterify, but, uh, by the way, is it makes every WordPress uh, website better. Check it out. It's on the repo. It's a brilliant plugin. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, okay. Um, the size of the plugin doesn't matter. Number of blocks doesn't matter. If it solves problems for people and helps them, it right. just makes the description clear and ship it. Yeah. I think the other interesting piece on it is like you could put it on GitHub, you could put it on your blog, like so people could start to use it. But then you yeah. could, but also like the whole education piece of going through putting something on a repository. If you've never done that, that's a good learning experience too. And then when uh, then you have to support it for the next version of WordPress. You know, then they'll email you, and then you have to relearn it all again because you have one plugin on the repository, <laughs> and then you know, like right. it, it's 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 giving back to the community. It makes it more visible too. Like people can see it um, when it's on the repository. Right. All right. right. Awesome. Thanks for the question. Anyone else with a question? Yes, Mr. Topher. Oh. What the schedule? The schedule. Wow. Thank you, Topher. That is like so. Wow. That's polite like, and sweet. It and really is. Like, and you, did, you said he wasn't very cool. <sighs> <laughs> There's a bus it's between us, man. <laughs> and there goes Kyle. Uh, our schedule is: we come out every week. When when, we, when the show comes out, it's on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. We try to record weekly. It's sometimes difficult with some travel, and more difficult when you have a young toddler at home sometimes for scheduling. But um, we're cons fairly consistent on Wednesdays. 
at five, no, at six a.m. <laughs> Eastern. Is that important? Yeah, it is. Hey, you want to know the schedule? There yeah. You go. Okay. Is, yeah. Was that the question? Like when the episodes come out, or something further? No. Okay. Like right. further live shows are currently unscheduled. And if you I really guess. Really like it to come out every week. Just let me know, and I'll fill in for one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin's uh-huh. been our substitute yeah. co-host yeah. on a number of occasions. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Lewis. I would first consider this 14-year-old what daughter it, to actually? check out Joomla. Yeah. And leave me the heck alone. I don't, I've heard good things about Expression Engine. <laughs> uh, uh, there's also Cold Fusion. Yeah. Um, wow. That's one heck of a question. How much time do we actually have? Oh, time's up. I think that there are restrictions for like shipping butterbeer, actually. So yes. I would, be, I would look into the regulations about First that. First and foremost, yeah, make Contact sure that your, your state approves of said. Local uh, pickup only. <laughs> yeah, local pickup only. That's right. <laughs> no idea. drop shipping. Yeah, that's um, if you want to send that question in, we'll make fun of it again next week. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, that's awesome. usually our answers are very well researched. I think that was very well. Uh, had a lot of buzzwords in it. Uh-huh. You did. Know, if you're playing the WordPress bingo, like you got Gutenberg, you got uh, right, <laughs> right, <laughs> WooCommerce, right, yeah. recurring billing, memberships, delivery. This side of the room is pretty quiet, which we like. Any other questions? <laughs> 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 Anyone else? Stan, any questions? Okay. Oh, thank yeah. you, Stan. Yes, Brian. <gasps> oh, you can download that from our WooCommerce store. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy the graphic as a digital download. It's an iron-on. <laughs> um, I ha- I picked these up on the way here, and I haven't um, gotten invoiced from my vendor, so I don't know how much they cost yet. Hopefully, it's not that much. How does, <laughs> how, how does that work? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, from me? Talk to me. Yeah. I figured, I like I said, if there's demand, if people like actually like this, because it's got all these like questions on it from their show, like uh, I'll make more. Nice. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm impressed, and that takes a lot. Right on. It's this nice like athletic material. I don't know. I thought it would be a fun choice. Right. I thought you would like it. I, yeah, I like it a lot. Do you? I do. Do you? Are you, do you, are you, are you really being honest? I am. Okay. All I right. don't lie on I saw stories. another hand raised over there. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Since we have a WooCommerce happiness engineer, Dustin. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll repeat the question um, for the recording to make sure that everybody hears that. But the big thing, the question was, in a nutshell, like kind of wrapped around is, uh, they're using flat rate shipping right now for specific items, and it's multiplied by the number of items that are in the cart. So if they have two or three or four different product types, when somebody buys two or three of those things, they're getting multiple, like, so they're paying shipping for two, three, four things in a row, um, which in theory makes a lot of sense like if you are a store owner like you're making money on your shipping like you're but that's not that's not going to help you sell things because th- somebody's going to check out and they're going to see forty two dollars to ship from you know across the city like they're not going to buy um the we have a module at uh, woocommerce it's called table rate shipping and it is like the the standard uh flat rate shipping but it's a little bit more advanced and so you can programmably say like if one or two are, you know, if for sure it's one and two, it's going to be this price. For sure it's three, four, five, and six, it's, you know, this flat fee plus $1 per item. You can set a flat rate max of, 
$10 for shipping is going to be the max. You can bundle things together so you can say if you have one of these and one of these, like you can kind of merge it all together. So the built-in the built-in flat rate isn't very robust when it comes to WooCommerce. So an extension is really needed to um, to really dial that in. The I guess the really only other option is to uh, just charge less for shipping, and you can you, you have to kind of realize when you're doing an e-commerce store, shipping is hard. Like it is really hard. Um, especially if you're coming up with the, you know, what cost is like you, you're in your case, it's really hard. Um, even if you were using like the USPS or FedEx and you're getting live rates in for pulling them from an API, like to get the products packed in the exact same box with the exact same weights and dimensions that WooCommerce is putting in, it's hard. Like it's, it's just, it's a difficult thing. So we want to, um, we always recommend like some orders you are going to lose a little money in shipping and some orders you're going to make a little money but in the general scheme of things like it's going to add up to very close to you know some orders you'll you know you might that you might pay two dollars more than they actually paid you but then other orders you'll pay two dollars less than they actually paid you but table rate shipping is going to be the best plug-in that's going to be able to let you dial in those costs a little bit better yeah cool thanks i'm so glad we had you here dustin right I know. It's right like, it's so well worth the money I spent to get here. Yeah. <laughs> $11.20. Yeah. <laughs> so, I had points on Southwest, that's all. So uh, any, want to take one more? I think we could afford to take one, one more. more oh, and that's the one question. One more in the back. Going, it's going to be. Off of what was the last part? Ramp. Ramp. The Ramp. crowd favorite plugin. The, no, um, oh. 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 We would send them to you yeah. <laughs> because we're idiots. Pretty easy. Huh? <laughs> Repeat the question, someone. <laughs> All right. So the question is, did you? If you have a client and they're running, say it one more time, Andrew, Andrew, because <laughs> I'm so confused still. Cla okay. Yep. Right. <laughs> right. It's actually it, it's a good. Question and fairly straightforward. And repeat it. How do you um, approach the question of <laughs> getting your clients to migrate to or like eventually adopt G Gutenberg? G Gutenberg. Right. Five point one, et cetera. Right. Okay. Okay. I think it's straightforward, and I feel I feel good about this one. I don't. Okay. Um, I wouldn't. I would say stick with classic. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like that's <laughs> D done. <laughs> All right. Turn you guys off. That's one option. That's one option. <laughs> probably like, not the best option. No. Probably not. It's still supported for what, another two years. We're good. I know. I know. Okay. But okay. The, the ending support for that is not really going to be the impetus for all sites adopting the modern editor. Sure. So I would approach it this way. Dear clients, we need to fix your site. It's $5,000 to fix it. Starting point one. Well, yeah. That's, okay. you, that's your you style. Yeah, I need to, he's make, a living. to make a living. Right, right, I, mean, right, I need right. to make money. You have a day job with <laughs> marketing. <laughs> it's true. Okay. Um, I think uh, I would give an example uh, where, like, what's what's going to happen is uh, you're you're going to want to go to the new editor. Mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time. Right. Uh, you will be coming back and asking for this and eventually begging for it. Be <laughs> like, uh, it's. Yeah, I don't see that happening. That part happening. No. It, I don't see clients saying, please let us have this. No, it, it will happen. Okay. It will happen. Then I'm wrong. Think about this. <laughs> I've got a computer in my basement. <laughs> okay. From like 18 years ago. It turns on. It works. Okay. All the things that it was designed to do when it was relevant still work. Word perfect. It does all those things. Okay. What it doesn't do is all the things that became useful and standard and relevant after as of now, nothing new is getting developed for the classic editor. 
So starting now and in the future, new things that we're not doing or using now are going to be introduced, and you're going to want them, and you won't be able to use them with the classic editor. What about classic press? The fork. Oh. It's compl- yeah, that's oh. not. Don't try and derail this. Okay, <laughs> that's completely off topic and irrelevant. The what point about- is, this is going to happen. Like with every every month that goes by and every year, there are going to be more interesting things developed and introduced, more new technologies, more new requests coming in, and those are going to be built for the future. So and that it, is this modern block based editor. And it sounds as if when this happens, that you are pre- um, predictions for you is you are going to have clients again to talk to about this. No, no. <laughs> See, you're taking this in weird directions. It's unnecessary. <laughs> That's my job. Yeah. <laughs> That's my job. No, this is not just like just some uh, prediction. Like this is, this is just what will happen. Mm-hmm. It, eventually, you will see things and you will want them and you will not be able to have them. <laughs> uh, because it's it's over. They'll st- they're technically still supporting the, right. the classic editor. It's Nothing being, new so is being built. Bugs will be fixed, right. but no new features are going to be introduced ever, forever. Uh, and strong words. It's the, it's the end. Uh, it's the beginning of the end. <laughs> I'm just so sad. So now. <laughs> it's not that striking right now because it hasn't been that long. Not a lot of new amazing technologies have been introduced, but pretty soon <laughs> it's going to happen. I think uh, one thing that I thought of was one of the good things that you could do is like work with your clients or talk with them and see like what their workflow is for creating new posts or new content on their website. One of the things that like I I moved over to Gutenberg early because well well why not like let's run it on a live site who cares like what could what could happen it could break whatever. Um, but it really changed my workflow. Like every week I have a podcast as well. And so my workflow completely changed because I couldn't paste my markdown block directly in there. It just didn't work right. And I mean, it had one block instead of multiples. Like, so I just kind of worked through and figured out how I could change my workflow and it worked better. So the big thing is like, oh, how do you add images? How do you do this? Well, I can show you on this thing over here how much easier this will make your life. Yes, it's gonna be a little different, but you know you have a lot more flexibility and there's a lot more cool things that you can do with this new editor. So that would be a way if I had clients and if I was, you know, gung ho about the block editor like I am. Right. I would. Yeah. I mean, so from my perspective, I do run an agency, and we are in early talks with clients who are running old versions of WordPress. Um, I've locked it down. They're running classic uh, for now. I mentioned to them back in November, December, um, for the mere fact that. They need a refresh site anyway. So when, when we rebuild it, it will be <laughs> in Gutenberg. Really? It's a conversation to have. But it's not going to be it's, – it's a whole new site as well. So in that case, it's a whole new investment for them. It's not going to be piecemeal. It'll be the whole thing at once. Mm. So, But it's a, it's a conversation that has to happen. What about classic press? What about it? <laughs> if you can't take it, get out. <laughs> All right. We should wrap it up. We're uh, – we're done. Okay, this has been really fun. This is the Get Ashes Podcast. You can find us on iTunes and Stitch and Spotify and all those other places. I don't know wherever you get your podcasts. You can send questions if you have them. We really would like them. That's the lifeblood of this show is getting more interesting questions. And believe me, just read the shirt that I'm wearing. We get a lot of interesting ones. Some bizarre questions out of, the, out of there. It's just like off the wall stuff. And those are our favorites. We spend a lot of time researching this these topics and sometimes we even write creative songs mm. uh, which you can listen to for the show tune in you never know what you'll hear you might hear one of us rapping or singing the blues relating to the topics of the day you can check us out on soundcloud we have a whole channel devoted to all of the uh, all Thanks. the songs that all we've the things, recorded yeah. for the show yeah and uh, follow us on social media or something or go to our website i don't know anyway we want your questions and that's all it's been really fun dating you guys are cool check out steve grunwell after us right on and you can follow us uh, on twitter at get underscore options Mr. Kyle Maurer, I'm at Hey Adam Silver. Alex is somewhere, and so is Dustin. You can find us. <laughs> Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. And you can applaud if you want. Yeah, thank you, guys. Okay.